Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the weekly devotion for February 13, 2023. Today's title, Applying the Brakes. Well, I just got done working on my mom and dad's uh, car, put, put new brakes on, so I got to thinking about that today. You know what? Brakes are essential. Um, the engineering of brakes in all cars is basically the same. Um, everyone that I've worked on at least, when you press on that pedal on the floor, uh, it forces hydraulic fluid down into the, to the pads. The caliper squeezes it onto this rotor and friction does the rest. And the next thing you know, you're slowing down and you're, and you're stopping your vehicle. So that works pretty good. Of course, the mechanics of braking are completely dependent more or less on the driver, really, um, that's using those brakes. The driver has to know when to stop, where to stop, and so on. It's the when to press the brakes that becomes the critical moment. Several things come into play when the when factor is in play. So let's go on. For example, <clears throat> weather conditions make, make a difference for when you're going to apply the brakes, right? If the road is icy or the weather outside is frightful, one has to give themselves a lot more room to brake or to stop this also means that the driver must also be more alert and more patient. And if it's raining, one needs to slow down where there, there could be puddles or water over the road, for sure. <clears throat> now, closely related to weather are the roads themselves. We are obviously not going to drive 75 miles an hour on curvy, windy, hilly uh, drive uh, these roads that um, with the, have lots of guardrails and turns where you got to slow down on every little hill. Um, you got to control your speed. Having grown up on gravel roads, I can tell you that driving too fast over the potholes that always develop, especially in the wintertime and get frozen that way for several months, you got to slow down on those things or your car is going to take such a beating it may not last. Not only that, but loose gravel. Loose gravel on those roads after they graded them were like ball bearings, so you really had to slow down. You have to keep your speed pretty reasonable, depending on the roads. Another condition, well, drivers around us. We, know, <clears throat> we, don't, we don't know if they're at, um, on their phones or putting on their makeup or what they're doing these days in their cars. We don't know if they're a new driver who is uh, usually in some kind of a hurry or an older driver who struggles to see. Anyway, Someone cuts us off or drifts in our lane, well, or stops suddenly, those brakes become pretty important. You got to have them to stop. But probably the most important condition, the most important factor about brakes uh, is you and me. It's the driver. When driving, uh, it's our attention and our ability to make the brakes work for us best, right? And that's where the rubber, if you will, don't mind my saying so, that's where the rubber hits the road. <laughs> like, the, like what I did there. That's what we're talking about this week. Brakes keep us out of trouble and they are necessary to slow down or stop. Applying our spiritual brakes all works the same way. And this is where my head started going. Um, sometimes we need to slow down. Perhaps we need to yield or just stop. Whichever we, whichever we may apply our brakes, our spiritual brakes, often depends on the conditions and the responding to those conditions properly. So let's consider the first condition. Knowing when and where to stop, to apply those spiritual brakes to stop. Like the roads which have no, uh, that have stop signs and stop lights, scriptural uh, spiritual, the scriptures rather, they have some pretty plain places within them where one is to stop. And I can't name them all today. There are many of them, but there are boundaries, right? Boundaries are where to stop. Uh, it was believed that when the, uh, for example, in Matthew chapter five, verses one through 14, uh, it's an interesting thing uh, in our, in this regard today, Jesus finds a paralytic sitting by the pool of Bethesda. This paralytic had been coming there for a long, long time. And every day the routine was to crawl down to the water. And there were lots of people there. It was crowded because 
when it bubbled up, when the pools bubbled, it was believed the first one in there, those bubbles would bring healing to them. And so Jesus meets him there, and he talks about that with the man. And uh, <clears throat> he says to him in verse 6, he asks him if he wants to get well. Do you want to get well? Do you want this to be done? Are you ready to stop coming here? And see, Jesus heals him, and he goes out and then tells the religious leaders, it's on a Sabbath that he was healed. And then verse 14 comes along and, and, and says, Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Wow, that's an interesting thing to say. But in other words, if you truly want to be well, stop chasing um, stop chasing the idols like the pool of Bethesda. That's not where you're going to find your salvation. Bubbles can't save you. <laughs> Jesus would also tell a woman later on who was caught in adultery, remember her? Go and sin no more. Stop sinning. There's all, there are a couple of places in there where he comes right out and says it. Of course, Jesus gets very specific about many other examples of where to stop, where to apply the bricks, put those boundaries in place in the Sermon on the Mount. Many examples. For example, Matthew chapter 5, we also hear, whoever looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery with inside of his heart. And whoever is angry at his brother has already committed murder in his heart. In other words, stop doing that. Don't do that. Paul says something similar to this in places that, like uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 18, which says, run away, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. In other words, stop. Don't do that. Uh, look at those boundaries. Now, if we're reading, reading the word, a lot of accidents and injury to self and others are avoided by stopping altogether, by knowing where to stop. Roads that we drive, uh, you know, that we drive regularly, become very familiar to us, don't they? You know where the stop signs are. You can tell where the turns are. You're just almost automatic about it. <clears throat> if, if we look at the scriptures in that way, if you travel through them enough, you know where the stop signs are. You know where the turns are. You know where to slow down. You know where to pay attention. But you know where to stop most of all. And so it's the same thing here. To stop and avoid, um, when we're in the scriptures, we know where the, the, we know where to stop and avoid things, and uh, we know where to watch out for the hazards. Same thing. In another category, let's go on. <clears throat> Sometimes it's important to yield, not just not stop all the other, but yield to another. Right? To let somebody uh, pass on, pass on by. Uh, this is often a place for mercy and forgiveness. One thing we talk about in Grief Share are the stupid things people say to you while you're grieving. Uh, <clears throat> things like, at least you have other kids, or at least you have kids. Well, I guess heaven needed another angel in heaven, or something of that nature. Such things feel very abrasive, insensitive even. When a mourning per person hears them at the funeral home or afterwards, so we teach them to yield in mercy. Most people are very uncomfortable at funerals, and because of that, they're trying to be comforting, but often we blow it, don't we? We're not always good at it. So be ready to forgive and let it, let one go. They're trying to be kind, but they're not the greatest, okay? So <clears throat> along with this one, one might just learn to bite their tongue for at least a while, too, just to let that go. If someone is just argumentative or upset, be, uh, perhaps on another front, just just do more listening instead. Don't argue with them if they can't be talked to right now. Let it settle or simmer. Maybe you'll get another op opportunity. Um, <clears throat> likely that person may not be in that frame of mind where they can hear anything anyway. They just need to get it off their chest. And at least they're communicating. That's a good thing. But Romans 12, 18 says, says it best. If, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everybody. The one true fact about this verse is that you and I hold all the cards. 
uh, as to how you choose to react to somebody. We've talked about this before. Even <clears throat> ever been at a four a four way stop where you can tell someone's in a hurry, they just have to be first. Well, okay. Often the best action to take is just let them be first. Let them go on through. And by doing so, you've gotten out of their way, and frankly, they just don't disrupt your day anymore. It's all good. In the same way, yield, yielding may allow someone to cool off, uh, think about things more, and eventually rebuild from a, from a bad moment. So yielding's okay. Lord knows how many times we have, he's had to forgive us, you know. So let's, let's practice that mercy that he's given us, that love and that grace. Now, the, the last one here, <clears throat> just slow down a bit. I, I tell young parents all the time, savor the time when your kids are little. Uh, they don't stay little for long. I tell, you, I tell all, all kids, uh, all, I tell all kinds of folks, rather, to enjoy their folks, their grandparents, and others to do the same, because that time goes away so fast. And Ecclesiastes 3 tells us, you know, there's a time for everything. And then God has made everything beautiful in its time. So look for the beauty, right? Look for the good stuff in that moment. There's some there probably. Don't be afraid to slow down. Take some back roads. See some country. See something different. Break the routine a little bit. Every, everything today is about being efficient and fast. Yet it's not the drive-through or the quick service that always matters, is it? It's the company we keep. It's the people we're around. And you can't replace those once they're gone. The, the hurry up world has is, is made us to be impulsive, hasn't it? Pressure salesmen drive me crazy on this stuff. They say something like, well, if you buy this right now, we can take another 10% off. But it's only good for today. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> and isn't it scary, by the way, how quickly one has to make up their minds about buying a house anymore. I mean, you got to make an offer before you're rolling out the door with a lot of con uh, uh, contingencies that usually follow, of course. It's all very crazy. Being still, be still, Psalm 4610 uh, tells us. Be still and know that I'm God. Yeah, when you're sitting still, when you're hunting, when you're sitting still, you take time to be quiet. It allows me, to, when I'm doing it, to hear the sounds around me and maybe just take in what's actually going on. Being still lets me enjoy the moment when all I have to do is hold Caden, my grandson, to slow down, to be still, wherever you can get it. Like rest stops. Take a moment once in a while, right? Take a break. B-R-A-K-E. See what I did there? Breaks are necessary, guys. We all know this. If we're going to arrive anywhere safely, you got to know where to apply the brakes. Spiritual brakes help us to arrive uh, to where we want to go in Jesus as well. We might do a little slipping and sliding along the way. Maybe we get a little fender bender, close calls. Uh, maybe our, something gets broken, but one way or the other, knowing where to break is always essential. Knowing where and when to stop is the key to our journey with Jesus. Well, I pray that the Lord blesses you on your journey this week and that this has been a blessing to you. And I pray that the Lord gives you the breaks that you need at the right moments. In the meantime, the Lord bless you and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.